bring back the swoosh sound because this conversation went right over my head. Is there an, an appropriate number of pillows that you should have on your bed? Well, not necessarily, but the layers are really what oh make it look complete. So Jen, Jen and I pillow. have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Welcome to the Art of Custom from Hibbs Homes. Sponsored by Pella Window and Doors and Ferguson Bath Kitchen and Lighting Gallery. In this episode, we welcome Anne and Anna from our Hibbs Homes design team once again, along with interior designer Meg Manicki with Olive and Opal Interiors. We discuss all of the bedrooms in your home, from the master suite to study areas and even bunk beds for adults. Enjoy! It's a sanctuary for homeowners where everyone begins and ends their day. We're, of course, talking about bedrooms. From large suites to multi-purpose guest rooms, they're among the most functional rooms in the house. But I'm told they don't always get the attention they deserve when it comes to designing and building a house. Melody, explain yourself. A lot of people think it's just a box. To stick a bed in, but Isn't there are a it? lot of cool. No, there are a lot of really cool things that you can do with a bedroom. Like what? Conversation areas. And I guess yes. that's what our guests are for, right? Yes. <laughs> we have some really cool guests here today to help us deconstruct all of the ways you can make a bedroom a retreat. Anne and Anna are back. They're the dynamic design duo with Hibbs Homes, and Meg Minicki. She's the lead interior designer at Olive and Opal Interiors, located in Clayton, Missouri. It is so nice to have each of you with us. This is going to be an interesting conversation. I don't know where to begin. We're talking about the bedrooms. We're talking about a lot of different design ideas and, and what to think about if you're building a home or maybe remodeling a home. So why don't we start at the beginning? And Meg, I'll pose the first question to you. We generally, as new construction builders, have a chance for our clients to truly start from scratch. Most bedrooms, though, still seem to be square or rectangular. They don't change much. If you were starting from scratch, what would you consider? I've been to a couple of Airbnbs that have intentional spaces carved out for a reading nook or a little spot for a desk so that somebody can work from home or work late into the night, but kind of be away from the bedroom as well. So many people are thinking about a personalized space when they're in their homes now because more people are spending more time at home. And so when I walk into a bedroom that has an additional nook, I'm a big fan of that. That's not just your typical four walls, square box. What are some other ways that you can imagine the footprint of a bedroom? I also love when people will put like a back deck off of their primary bedroom. It just allows that space to open up to the nature that usually we're building in. We usually have such great lots that our clients find. So you get to really allow everything to flow I'm seeing a ton of circular patterns happening, like more ovals, kind of a rounded like space. A turret. Yes. Allowing more than just a chop, chop, chop wall and more of like a whoosh. Wall. That's a great description there. <laughs> I, I wish everybody could yeah. see her hand kind of doing the, you know, the, the half circular motion. Yeah, I talk with my hands too much. <laughs> now, the fact that you are able to create a visual impression using sounds. I just, I, I could see what you were saying. the impressive. microphone. Yeah. This is how we help our clients visualize. <laughs> they, they both use their hands a lot. A lot. Yes, we do. We're talking about having a chance to design in many cases from scratch or additions and, and renovations and all. Windows to me seem almost like it would be a tough decision to make because you want to welcome in some of the natural light but at the same time, it's where you sleep and you want to make sure you don't have too many windows. So, Anne, I'll pose this question to you. Windows in a bedroom, what are your thoughts? Oh, definitely. People want to have the natural light coming in, but also you need to have a way to control that, too. You know, we're seeing a lot of motorized shades that go along with the windows that people want to have in their master bedrooms, blinds between the window panes, doors, like Anna was saying, that open out onto a patio or a deck. People wrap it up all together, the coffee station, the deck, 
be in their bedroom and have their coffee and walk out that door onto their deck or their patio and just be in that natural sunlight. Meg, what's your take on window placement and even skylights, I guess, if we want to expand this out a little bit? Skylights is interesting. They're kind of an afterthought in most cases, but I think that they're fun. More importantly, though, I really do love ample lighting and natural lighting. I think it really helps to elevate people's moods and boost their mood when they have natural lighting flowing within their space. I'm a big fan of a ton of windows, whether it be in the bedroom or elsewhere. And I agree with what you had stated about the window treatments are very fun now. And a lot of the times they're layered too. So bringing in an element of texture like a bamboo shade or a Roman shade paired with a light and flowy curtain to kind of frame the window is a fun way to really personalize the space as well. And two, going back to a personalized space in a carved out nook, if there was a glorified bay window or like a glorified sunroom right off the bedroom with a lot of great windows, a lot of great natural lighting, and then seating within that spot or a desk within that area, that's a really fun way to personalize your bedroom as well. And you need to be intentional about where you're placing yes. these windows and, and well planned out because you want to make sure if you have a, a large bed with nightstands on either side, you've got to make sure that the windows are placed properly or kept up at more transom heights and everything. So think about that when you're planning your home too. Absolutely. I've seen a lot more modern homes that have the shorter windows up high above where they would place their bed. But most of the time I see bed rooms that have the windows flanking either side of the bed. And then there's a lot more windows or French doors, like you said, leading out to a patio. This podcast is sponsored by Pella Windows and Doors. Pella is the industry leader in innovation and style. Windows have become a key element in home design and Pella has the product and professionals to guide you to your perfect solution. Pella is cutting edge in energy efficiency, durability, and performance. If you're tired of looking through screens, check out the Pella integrated roll screen that you won't see until you need it. Pella offers the broadest selection of premium products to meet any budget and any design inspiration. Allow Pella to show you what they can do to improve the style and comfort of your home. With Pella's limited lifetime warranty, you won't have to worry about windows and doors again. Call 314-714-0100 to make an appointment or visit our showroom in Chesterfield Valley. We're doing a lot of different ceiling treatments in the homes we're building. Some have beams, some have trays, some have coffers. I mean, there's just a lot of different ideas. So again, and I try to be intentional when you're designing your home to think about what that ceiling in the master bedroom is going to look like. Definitely. And it's a great way to add your own personal flair to your space. I love skylights in the bedroom except for the fact that I need it to be like a cave to sleep. <laughs> so <laughs> thankfully they come with blinds. You can really do what you need to do, but they allow just a different level of light to flow into your space. Like I've been using them a lot in bathrooms, helping with like makeup even, just to have light coming from all different perspectives. And when we're talking about the footprint of the room, there are a lot of other things that you want to take into consideration besides just the window placement. Lighting and outlets, electricity, when you're doing all of that, what are you seeing with that? And what are the reasons that people are placing outlets and things in certain spots? I have clients that use like Tempur-Pedic pads where you need to have a plug in the floor in a certain location. So with new construction, it's so easy. Also with like more tight spaces, allowing sconce placement right then and there keep them thin narrow or like even little pendants from the ceilings really cute those sorts of things because it's hard when you're building or even walking into a new home you're sometimes stuck in a certain space that you can use where you don't want to always make sure that the space is going to fit just this and that's what i have to have for the rest of my life you want to have it flowing with what you could potentially change down the road I think the key thing is from our projects, we always do a walkthrough, an electrical walkthrough with our clients. So the electrician is there, the superintendent is there, the client is there. 
the client really needs to come prepared to fully describe how they're using that room and, and what they envision that room to be. Do you want some sort of lighted crown molding up in a, in a coffered ceiling so you have a soft glow? Do you need special outlets in the floor or in other areas? That goes for bathroom, exterior, I mean, all the different rooms. Just really be, be thorough and thoughtful about that. Let's talk about some of the secondary bedrooms. Our bunk rooms, and I know we're building in your, northern Utah, it seems like every home we're building there has a bunk room where multiple kids can kind of hang out and sleep together. There's a lot of study spaces between bedrooms and things like that. Bunk rooms are a big trend right now, and I am here for it. <laughs> I am a big <laughs> fan. And actually, the bunk rooms, too, kind of think outside of the box. When you think about a bunk bed, you think about a twin bed, but a lot of the times now they're custom building them and they're queen size beds. And so it's not just for children anymore. They're for adults that are staying overnight and think about the holidays and think about who comes into town and visits you. So I really like the idea of a larger bunk bed in a bunk room. It's a very custom design and it, there's a lot of fun ways to incorporate that as well. And then same thing with a study within a shared space between two bedrooms. I think that's a wonderful idea as well. Again, people are really considering how they're working from home these days. And so many of us are not going back to the office anymore. We're staying at home and we're working and that's for the foreseeable future. A lot of these companies are realizing that it's better to work from home. So to have a shared workspace is a brilliant idea and a great way to really carve that out so that at the end of the day, you can close that and then go back to your main living space and live out your best life there with your family at the end of the day. And you did an interesting project in the Chesterfield, Missouri area where you had two primary suites. Talk a little bit about that because that's another trend that we're seeing more and more. Right. That particular project, one was for an aging mother-in-law that was going to be living with them and Everything was on the first floor. The secondary master was right next to the primary, which I think was good placement in case there were ever any issues and the mother-in-law needed help. She also had a bathroom that was fully ADA compliant. It had a unique tub that opened up and she could you know, walk into the tub. The toilet was actually raised up even higher than comfort height or universal height. I believe it was like a 21 inch high, which is pretty darn high. So you don't have to bend down as far. The final piece was a body dryer. At the end of either showering or bathing, she could just stand there <laughs> and just dry herself off. <laughs> I know Olive and Opal was a finalist for the Risa Awards for Home Staging Team of the Year mm -hmm. in 2019. And so you guys know a little bit about making a bedroom look and feel inviting and comfortable. And so I was wondering if you could share with us some tips for thinking about that as you're designing your room and your space as well. A lot of the times I start with the largest piece of furniture in that space, which is the bed and have it really speak to your personal style. So there's a lot of great poster beds now or canopy beds or upholstered beds and start there. And a lot of the times for positioning, I like to position the bed where it's facing the doorway. So it feels open. Circulation is very important within a bedroom so that you don't feel too cramped. So whatever the circulation is best, depending on how your door swings out, is gonna be what you want to consider the most. And then balancing the room out with a dresser, whether it be that or if there's built-in closets and you don't need one, then maybe it's an extra seat like an armchair that has a lot of great style and personality. I'm a big fan of chairs in bedrooms because it's it becomes like a landing spot for your clothes. <laughs> like at the end of the day, you toss and you drape them over the chair. But really... That's just me. <laughs> are you seeing well, any special uh, wall coverings in bedrooms? I am, yeah. A lot of people are big fans right now of a focal wall, which that has always been a buzzword for so many. But it's the millwork or board and batten or beadwork or, like we said before, wallpaper is in right now. And people are going bold with their patterns. And I'm so in love with that. In your main living space, you share that with all of your family members, 
But in your bedroom, you can really make that more bold and moody and really speak to your and your spouse's personality. And you can really let that shine within your bedroom. Is it hard then to bring in things like your window coverings and all, or I guess that's what you're an expert at. So talk about how you pull all that together. As long as it complements each other and as long as it feels cohesive, pick up on some of the elements that are already established. Again, starting with whatever piece really motivates you, whether it be a phenomenal bed or it be an accent chair that you really love and working your way out from there. Either way, pick one piece and then build from that. Pick up on some of the elements that are already established within that piece, whether it be a wood tone or colors in an accent chair and repeat those throughout the room so that it feels cohesive. Repetition is key in cohesive design. So as long as you have those already established, you're good to go. I have never heard of that, but it sounds extremely simple, and it sounds like just a very (laughs) good suggestion. You mentioned wood. We're seeing most of our clients want wood floors in the bedroom. I would assume that's pretty common, or are there still people who want that comfy, cozy feel of carpet under their toes? I think wood floors are always a brilliant application in any home. Right now, gray tones are going out, so it's more of that like blonde wood or lighter wood. And you can always add area rugs. And no matter what season of life you're in, whether you have pets or animals or kids or a messy husband that likes to eat chocolate in bed at night, (laughs) I mean, whatever it may be, you can always replace an area rug. So it's harder to rip up carpet and replace that. So I always am a big fan of wood flooring, plus an area rug to make it feel cozy. Best of both worlds. Now more than ever, it's important for you and your family to enjoy the spaces you're in most often. Count on the experts at Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery to help you make the most of home and create a space you'll love to live in together. Shop online or schedule a personalized consultation to discover stunning products from the comfort of your own home. When you're designing a bedroom, what is the item that's worth upgrading? Oh, gosh, that's a tough one. I mean, definitely you want to invest in a great mattress. I was going to say mattress, <laughs> but that's I was not going, aesthetically pleasing. I was going to say the ceiling. I think a, a really cool ceiling, to me at least, is I think if you walk into the bedroom, that's what will really set it apart from others. A ceiling is like the opinion, fifth though. wall, and it's not often thought about. That fifth wall that is the ceiling, whether it becomes an accent beam or a coffered ceiling or painting your ceiling, um, it's a really cool way to upgrade your bedroom. I like that idea because think about it. Most of our homes have just white ceilings. Mm-hmm. And Definitely the closet. Oh. I mean, I know that's a separate room, but it's part of the master bedroom. And people are putting a lot of money into their closets and they're becoming larger That's also a great place to put the coffee station. I've had clients who will actually put washers and dryers in their master closet. A trend that I'm seeing that I really love is having a master closet that actually opens up into the laundry room. Anna, any ideas on if you could upgrade one thing in a master, what would it be? I think lighting is really important in a master. It's not the most expensive thing. It's a great way, though, to use a little bit of extra money to give it that extra punch that you need. Right. I agree. I've had clients that have been doing a lot of molding in the tray ceiling and then doing, you know, tape lighting for, you know, sort of that extra kind of mood lighting. And then, of course, if you're a big reader, you got to have that lighting. You do. Yeah. Meg, your thoughts? I agree with these ladies. I think closets are important. Lighting is so important. So many clients come to me and they're like, well, my husband really needs a ceiling fan. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, okay, I hear you, but there's ways that we can make the air circulate within that room without it being a ceiling fan. Although I will say ceiling fans have come a long way these days. There's some cute ceiling fans out there. But 
I mean, to really punch it up with lighting, having one big focal dominating piece in your bedroom is a really great way to set the stage. I want to go back because you're coming after my ceiling fan. Oh, so, oh. I know. oh. So, do you like your ceiling fan? I am or an not? airflow person, but I want to know how that air is supposed to flow without a ceiling fan. That <laughs> ceiling fan is key. Okay, Meg, you're on the hot seat. I mean, there are some cute fans out there that we can also put, like mount on the wall or have bedside. There's some really cute retro fans out there as well, but the ceiling fan issue. A lot of my clients, they bring it to my attention and I find solutions for them to incorporate a cute ceiling fan. When you're thinking about custom building a home, you have to think about how you're going to live in your space, mm. who's going to live in your space, and really what's going to be the best for you. So no, a ceiling fan is not the wrong answer. It's not a melody. I promise you there are hundreds of thousands of couples <laughs> across the country who are talking about ceiling fans and some want them on, some don't. Right. Some make that whoosh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Sound too much and others don't. So you're not alone. No. I need to I need to feel cold and my blanket keep me warm. That that is how I sleep. Yeah. So. That's how you get cozy. Yeah. It's so let, let's talk real quick about bedding then. Is there <laughs> any any tips as as far as uh, what's cool in uh, today's design trend with bedding? The sky is the limit as far as bedding, and it depends on your style. So crisp, clean, white bedding to make you feel like you're in a hotel is always fun. And that's if you have maybe bolder pieces within your room, go neutral. But if all your other areas are neutral within your bedroom, maybe go with a fun pattern as far as your bedding. But the thing I really love to see is adding layers to your bedding. So... Pillows are kind of another hot topic between husbands and wives and how many pillows you want to toss off your bed at the end of the day. <laughs> but adding those layers really give it that pizzazz and that final touch that you're looking for, that completed look. So when you make your bed and you have your pillows stacked and then you have your euros and you have your bolster pillow and you have all your accent pillows, I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. Bring back the swoosh sound because this conversation went right over my head. Is there an, an appropriate number of pillows that you should have on your bed? Well, not necessarily. There is no rule of thumb, but the layers are really what oh make it look complete. So Jan, Jan and I pillows. have a lot to talk about. <laughs> How many pillows are on your bed at home? Uh, four, usually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need more? You might want to add a couple more. I okay. don't know. I'm Jan, just saying. Are you listening? <laughs> you could definitely add a fifth. <laughs> definitely. We like odd numbers better than even. I just, so. I just right. call that my cat. <laughs> <laughs> True. Oh. <laughs> So the last piece is kind of having those conversation areas. You know, it is a shared space. Are those still popular? Do you have any ideas that you guys would want to share? So conversation in the bedroom. Again, incorporating an accent chair facing the bed. So at the end of the day, you're taking your shoes off, asking your spouse how their day is. Benches at the foot of a bed are also really great as well. Some of the times, a TV is facing the bed. And so sometimes you want to watch that TV and you want to sit somewhere else besides your bed. Chairs, benches are great for that. So incorporating those into your bedroom is always a great idea. Certainly learned a lot. Good conversation. And Meg, Anna, you guys have been great. Thank you so much. It was so fun. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Melody, I tell you what, from one episode to the next, you don't know what we're going to be talking about. Pillows and ceiling fans dominated some of the conversation, but quite frankly, it all made sense and was quite funny, too. That was a lot of fun. I loved having Meg join us. Yes. She had a lot of great ideas because we as custom builders a lot of times focus on the selections, but many times we don't see it through where we're talking about furniture and window treatment and things like that. So having Mega part of the show was just awesome. Well, and Anna brought up the point of outlet placement for, mm -hmm. you know, beds and things like that. That was something I don't think I would have ever thought of. When building a custom home, you can 
have decisions that affect everything about this house all the way down to where are we putting these outlets? So truly think about it. That's kind of the one homework assignment I always give the homeowners is to truly think about how you use your home, how you want to use your home, and just incorporate anything and everything you can into it because the sky's the limit during the process. It really is. So in our show notes, we're going to have some photos from specific projects. We have some really cool photos of ceilings, too, and they can see what we were talking about. Yeah, I love the show notes because it really helps people. You know, they're, they're listening to our podcast, obviously, but it's kind of a visual medium to give them a chance to see what we've been talking about. Um, by the way, this has been a fun season. We're now four episodes in. We've had some really great episodes before this. We invite anyone who just started listening to us to check us out, Apple Podcasts, podcast, Spotify. You can also go back and listen to some of the previous seasons of The Art of Custom as well, where we take everybody through the custom building process. So I invite people to check us out and go back and listen to a couple of past seasons. And also, we would appreciate it if you would rate the show and review the show. It really helps us grow. Absolutely. And if you want to get in touch with any questions, you can also contact us through social media or our website, www.hidshomes.com. USA.com. Okay, so next week uh, or next episode, I should say, we're going to move on into another very important part of the home. This is where everybody's going to gather outside of the kitchen, of course. What are we talking about? We're talking about great rooms. Great rooms and hearth rooms, and we hope to have everyone join us for our next episode. For more information, visit www.artofcustompodcast.com or find us on Facebook as The Art of Custom and on Twitter at Art of Custom Pod. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest episodes and please rate and review to help us grow. The Art of Custom is produced by Hug Monster Sound with original music by Adam Frick-Ferdine. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.